Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld, and I'm one of the Dell principal engineers who have been working to bring you the Dell cloud solution for web applications. This solution is pre-integrated, pre-tested, and a complete turnkey solution that includes both Dell's hyperscale PowerEdge C hardware and Joyant's proven cloud software. It is backed by Dell's installation and support services. Overall, the system is easy to implement, highly scalable, and a very efficient platform as a service offer. One of the benefits of this solution is that it exceeds industry standards on performance without increasing costs. It's one of the highest density cloud solutions that you can run in any data center. It runs the most demanding Web 2.0 applications such as social media, e-commerce, and online gaming applications. This slide shows you how the cloud solution for web applications is built. The solution is a combination of both Joyant's capabilities and six years of proven public cloud offerings with thousands and thousands of customers and highly dynamic loads. And Dell's experience building hardware for the highest density data centers on the planet. This solution focuses on web properties with its platform as a service capabilities. We also include integrated design and delivery services and support, so you can rest assured that your cloud will operate at highest efficiency. I'm going to spend the next few moments taking you through some of the features and capabilities of the product. Before I jump into actually using the product and showing you how it operates, I'm going to give you a quick overview on how the system is put together. The Dell Cloud Solution for Web Applications is a complete solution starting at the bottom of the PowerEdge C hardware. From that hardware, we use Joyant's smart operating system, which allows for incredibly dense, very performant smart machines. Telemeter is the monitoring system on top of that. Cloud Control provides the administrative portal and operations and has APIs that allow you to extend the capability of the product however you want. Applications libraries act like templates for smart machines that allow you to get started very quickly with the platform as a service capabilities. And finally, there's a user portal that allows self-service capabilities for the product so that administrators don't have to get involved in day-to-day -day tasks such as bringing up new machines or managing their power state. Let's jump right into using the system. Cloud Control is the component of the solution that allows operators to do day-to-day -day tasks required to keep the system operating and bring new users in. This view shows the customers, or if you were an in internal user, this would be departments or users that have access to the system. You can see we've put some test data in. We're going to create a new one in a moment. Data centers sh allows you to have multiple operating system so you can literally span the globe with this solution. You can see your remaining capacity within the system. Uh, pods and racks are the scale out units within a data center. You can have multiple pods. Racks are the racks of solutions. Uh, our production system start at three racks and expand upward uh, to 12 in a pod and then beyond that with multiple pods. And then from here we actually have different capabilities. The servers are the units um, of actual hosting where we run the smart OS and you can see how much capacity is left. Uh, roles allow you to determine what each one of those, of those systems can do so that they can be specially allocated depending on your purpose. Um, and then we have normal routine things like managing IP addresses, router subnets, uh, zones, and data sets are the internal name uh, for the smart machines, uh, and those are the actual uh, VM style uh, components that are given to users. So let's walk through uh, a simple case where we would want to start with a user getting access to their own information. In this case, we're going to create a new customer for the demo. Our demo customer will be called Demo Demo, and we are going to create a login account for this user. So now that we've created the account, we're going to give them user status. Our other choice would be admin. An admin would be an operator who can access cloud control. We don't want that in this case. We only want self-service, so we will enable that. And in this case, our customer has been created. Demo is now in the middle here, and they're being sent a welcome email instructing them on how to take their next steps. Uh, of course, the, the welcome email and the portal that I'm about to show you are completely customizable. So let's go there. 
Here we are at the departmental portal. In this case, I've taken the time to rebrand it with the Dell logo, and now we can log in with our new demo account. I've just logged in with my, with my demo account, and for this account, the, de the quotas have been set to unlimited. It is possible to allocate uh, demo, to al allocate quotas so that individual users uh, are not allowed to take advantage of too much of your system resources. Because I've just created this account, I don't have any uh, smart machines in it yet. I'm going to add one. In this case, I can choose. This list is controllable from Cloud Control, and it determines the different platforms of service capabilities that are enabled for each user. In this case, uh, the Pro template is my, my generic base template. The ZTM is the integrated load balancing software based on Zeus's um, products. And the MySQL system is a my dedicated MySQL database that's been tuned and optimized for this environment. These are all small instances for test. Uh, it's possible to take systems that go all the way up to the maximum amount of RAM, 48 gigs, uh, in your environment. So it's highly flexible and configurable. I'm going to request the smart machine, and it's going to provision my, my system. Let me show you what that looks like on the, in the queue on Cloud Control. So back in Cloud Control, I have the, demos, the demo customer screen in front of me. I'm going to jump in, check the job status screen. We can see that the job is, is actively running. Uh, here's today's date. And, and provisioning the system, we can see that there's several, several success messages and things are going well. You can see in clearly in places where we've, we've been testing and been able to in, uh, test for failures. In this case, we want to come back over, look at our demo customer from the admin view. And in this case, we can see that we've created this zone. This was created from the self-service portal automatically. I, it would be equally possible for me to create zones from this screen or from several other places and do them for the users. So users are able to either create their own capabilities here or administrators can do it for them in assigned systems. In this case, we can see this, the system is already running. Let's go in and check out this machine and see what we can find out about it. So here we can come in and take a look at the information we have about the system. It's doing a live check and now I can see my basic data and I can also do actions such as shutting down and rebooting if I needed. I can also take the IP address here and we can look and see what's what's come up automatically. I'm adding the website to the URL and in this case you can see this is the default home page for that accelerator, that uh, smart machine. I can also come in and attach to it using SSH and start doing configuration. Uh, in addition to direct SSH, there's also Webmin has been pre-installed so that you can take advantage of that utility uh, and do some self-service uh, graphical configuration. So let's log into the system using SSH. SSH is the way that most people would um, access and do administration on a smart machine, most of the more experienced administrators. We also include web webmin, so if you want to do graphical access, you're certainly welcome to do that. That's a default component for the system. Uh, in this case, I have logged in using our the, the Jill user. Uh, you cannot log in directly from root. You would have to sudo, and that's noted here. As I log in, the system comes with hard, valid uh, initial passwords to ensure security of the users. Uh, those users are able to see those passwords uh, and, of course, encouraged to change them. Once they change them, uh, this uh, login information is no longer accurate since that password is now a uh, secret between the person who changed it. Uh, but if they don't change it, uh, the system will at least have secure access. So now that we're logged in, uh, we have access to a standard system and we can do whatever we need, uh, including having root access, in this case our root password uh, is right there, and I could uh, sudo and uh, do whatever I needed to configure the system. Of course, even as I have root access, I don't have access to the hosts themselves. 
uh, that is a secure operation reserved only for the operators of the environment, not for users of individual smart machines. Before we uh, move away from self-service capabilities of the product, I wanted to take a moment just to show the shutdown reboot type capabilities. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to do a simple shutdown. And once I've done that, the system is sending a shutdown instruction, and I should lose connectivity into my SSH session, which I just did. Uh, and my web page is going to no longer be available. And uh, as you can see, it's going to time out. If I bring the system back on, then we'll recover from that. Uh, the system has very, very fast response time for start and stop. And we, here's my timeout, and now we're back. So we did a complete reboot shutdown cycle um, in just a couple of seconds. It's one of the powers of this solution. So now that we've talked a little bit about the self-service capabilities of the product, I want to show you how the operating portal works and some of the capabilities that are available to administrators. So let's continue our tour of the cloud control system. As I've already shown you, you can quickly see the customers that are available, drill into an individual customer, find out what's going on with that customer and the zones that they've created. If a zone was misassigned or not assigned to a customer it was created, it's very easy to assign that zone or, if necessary, to create new zones for that customer to take advantage of. In this case, you can see that we've already begun the, the process of assigning it. The system has a, for administrators, has a two-step process so that while new zones can be created and staged, they don't become active until they're initiated. This allows for better balancing and load assignment of the solution. In this, like most cloud solutions at hyperscale, it becomes important for operators to be aware of how they've provisioned uh, smart machines onto the overall system. They want to avoid fault zones. They want to avoid overloading one application on one system because of the possibility of a system failure. So by design, the system will automatically distribute smart machines through its automated system onto different hosts and ultimately across different racks. This allows the system to operate with a high degree of fault tolerance without requiring a lot of shared infrastructure or complex network configuration. So in this case, if I wanted to complete my configuration, I would see that zone set up in the zones list. Here's the second one assigned to the customer. And I could evaluate which machine it was going to be attached to. In this case, we're going to simply set it up and mark it for provisioning. So let's walk through those steps quickly. This is the system that was just set up. Before I queue it for provisioning, I'm going to choose to edit it. And instead of setting it up on the first server, I'm going to move it to our fourth server. At this point, I have the control to change how the system's going to go. Now I can queue it, and the system will show up in our user portal in just a couple of minutes. The other capability of the system I wanted to tour for you is the concept of templates. The system comes with three pre-configured templates, but it is possible for users and organizations and hosts to provide their own templates based on these original models or whatever they want. In this case, the pro template is loaded full of programming languages, supported platforms, and uh, additional frameworks. This allows you to move very quickly in almost any style of language or system that you wanted to create. The Zeus Firewall allows you to create a distributed multiple scalable application, multiple uh, smart machine scalable application very quickly and as part of the solution. And of course, the My Optimized MySQL database allows you to tie a database uh, behind the scenes for your scale out application. Based on these templates, we can create individual configurations that have specific amounts of RAM, CPU shares, priorities, 
uh, and other capabilities. This allows you to have, as an operator, very fine-grained control on what is provisioned within your system and how that system is going to behave with other systems. CPU shares and caps allow us to govern controls of individual smart machines so that they have uh, specific sharing capabilities and do not conflict with other systems, other smart machines in the system. This, these systems shown are the default configuration. We've already shown you jobs so that you can see the active components going on within the system. So let's jump back over to the smart portal and see if our machine has been set up. Here you can see we've added the next system. It's already available. And if we drill into here, we will see the information that we need to take access uh, and action on that. Another interesting component of cloud control is its capability to drill into very specific hardware and performance capabilities of each of the hosts within the system. From here, we can access the telemeter data system. The telemeter data system shows us very fine-grained information about how the system's going and also helps us target individual smart machines that may be exceeding or um, hitting the caps and limits that have been imposed. This allows us to very quickly go in and fix those limits um, and in fact, RAM capabilities, CPU limits, and things like that can be changed live without taking the system down at all. This allows for operators to come in and very quickly address performance issues by allocating more capacity on the fly uh, to smart machines that are being heavily utilized. In this case, we can see the accelerators, and then we can see the process. Uh, green, and, green, yellow, and red highlights are used to flag uh, problem areas, and then there are uh, graphs that allow you to see what's going on with the individual system components, processors, memory, storage capabilities, and then system logs. This rich information allows operators to carefully monitor and manage their cloud environment. I hope this has been helpful and that you have seen and learned something about the Dell Cloud Solution for Web Applications. If you have further questions, please visit us on the web or contact our sales force. We would be happy to give you a personalized tour. Thank you.